pardon me, the director of the Five Doctors special, who's also going to be directing the first episode with Colin Baker, the Sixth Doctor, Mr. Peter Moffat. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you a few distinguished uh, members of Doctor Who, starting with Sarah Jane Elizabeth Slate. Uh, and now, the Brigadier Nicholas Courtney. Chronological order, three doctors. The first being Patrick Trump. Should we have some questions, or do you want to speak to them first, or what? Uh, oh, there's people out there, look. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think they should talk to us, don't you think? Yeah. Perhaps if they ask a question. Uh, Start, right. Starting with you, Peter, I think. All right. Good. So we'll, we'll pick somebody out of the crowd each in turn, so there's <laughs> no unfairness, we hope. Okay, so I'll start. Some fair-haired boy up there. Do you, you? No? You in the greenish jacket, do you? Is anything, anything going, he's asked, is anything going to happen with a chameleon? I, I can answer that, actually. You can. You're speaking with great authority about chameleon. Uh, yes, yeah, something did happen to chameleon. What happened was, it, it, in the middle of a recording about a couple of weeks ago, it fell over backwards and his head dropped off. <laughs> but uh, we did manage to stick the head back on and complete the story. Uh, and, uh, in fact, it's a chameleon's exit, so he's, he doesn't, um, he lasts just a little less time than I do. It's <laughs> a chameleon, not chameleon. Chameleon, not a chameleon. We'll share one. Peter and I aren't trying. You always quarrel. You go on. Have, a, have your own mic. He's Who's certainly not. No, you are not. I'll share with Peter. We've shared before. Oh, this is the A team. Right, my turn to pick somebody. <laughs> Over there, I can just see a hand, not the person. Yes, you that's looking behind you. Yes, it's me. Yes, you. Oh. Okay. Um, I have to repeat the question. And Liz, would you, would you reply, please, and repeat the question? Yes, please. <laughs> Yes, you have to repeat the question. Um, we didn't hear it. It's a very flattering remark just um, about Sarah Jane to say how much you, in, you enjoy watching her. All I can say is uh, the gentleman there has very good taste. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Yes, Zoe. Oh. I, I, the question is, could I say um, Eldrad must live? You all pick on this line. I don't know why. I say Eldrad must live. Or, or Eldrad must live. Or Eldrad must live. I don't know how I said it. <laughs> My turn. Yes, sir. How might I know if uh, you would return to Doctor Who? Would it be possible to play the character Salamander, the enemy of the world, against the Doctor? Good heavens, that's going back. I love that. It? That's going. <laughs> Poetry, this is my question. <laughs> Shut up. Um, that's a, I do know that's a that's a rather interesting question, isn't it? But didn't he get his comeuppance? I think he did. Yes. No, but it's pretty nasty, though, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, I suppose. Hmm, it's quite a good idea, yes. But I, um, I, think I can think of lots of other ones. I've got a super story, a really good story, which I think I might write one day to do, and that's the one I want to do. But it wouldn't be Salamander. It'd be a great big hairy monster up, up in a mountain somewhere, terrorizing the neighborhood. <clears throat> I'll write it one day. Autobiography. Can that answer your question? Jolly good. Let's pass it on to Peter. He's uh, more well behaved than Pat Uh Okay, yes, the uh, girl holding the little. Um... That's right, yes, doll. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> This I've got to see. <laughs> this is not a question. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I object. This, this is a performance. <laughs> Felicity is wearing a beautiful <laughs> blue <laughs> <laughs> Just look at that. Thank you very much. I love it. I'm afraid it's Pertwee's turn now. <laughs> Just uh, take a break, will you? <laughs> if you can stand up with the weight of that scarf. <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. That's all right. You're exonerated. Miraculous. Uh, what is your question? I have gifts for the doctor. A gift. Oh, oh, goody. I step don't. forward, all with gifts. <laughs> to hell with, to hell with it. Oh, it's what I bought. Oh, for me. <laughs> oh. I'm not taking anything after him. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I got mine yesterday. You're quite right. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very right. nice of you. Yeah, we told it yesterday. Okay. Uh, so let's have another another question. Uh, yes, they did that. Oh, well, yeah, uh, yes, um, I, I would do, very briefly, but because a lot of you don't know what it's all about. The Wurzel Gummidge, the question is, but I just tell you a bit what it's about. 
It's a, a, a classic children's story that was written in the 30s by a lady called Barbara Euphrem Todd about a, a scarecrow who comes to life. It's a fantasy program very much in the sort of genre of, of science fiction in so far as a, a scarecrow comes to life when he wants to yawn, read. You shut your face. <laughs> More or less it. I'm not going to get any more of that out. I can see it. <laughs> but it's about a scarecrow who is beloved by two children and he comes to life and he, he has his lady love, and Aunt Sally, which is a wooden figure that you throw balls at in coconut shies, and that's his girlfriend. <laughs> it's called Wurzel Gummidge, and we've been making it for five years in England, uh, where I'm glad to say it's very successful, but it's not successful enough to be on the air at the moment because we lost our sponsor, <laughs> the company we're making it. So a very long business. answer, isn't it? <laughs> Well, it was a very long question. We have to admit, very, much. very reluctantly, that most of what he says is rather true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. If you want to know turn. more about it, ask Eric Hoffman. He's got all of them on tape. Oh, on tape. Again. oh yes, he's showing one, actually, during the talk. There are bits of it. If you see any Eric Hoffman's talk, he's showing a bit of Wurzel Gummidge. Over to you, Peter. That's enough, John Pertz. Yes, I know. I realize that. <laughs> uh, right. Let's have somebody way away, far away, for a change, eh? Right at the back somewhere. Uh, yes, boy with the brown. Uh, you? Yes, well, I'm looking round for somebody else. That's right. I would like to know in the five doctors, oh. in, the, in the show, the five doctors, why was it that canine was with Sarah? How did Sarah. that... Yes, I didn't realize that. Um, you wouldn't understand in America because you haven't seen K9 and Company yet. Well, somehow. Yes, somehow. Yes, somehow. Oh, they're starting on me now, aren't they, wicked? So there's, there's a show that K9 and Company that's going to be shown here eventually? It's going to be shown not this Christmas, but next Christmas. It's, um. Yeah. Thank you. My turn to pick. Will someone at the back put up their hand? So into someone go at the back? No. There. In the white. Um, I'm afraid this is for the brigadier and the three dachshunds. I don't mind. Okay. <laughs> um, considering how attractive you all are, do you have problems with female fans, especially over in America? <laughs> That saying, yes, thank God. <laughs> it's no trouble at all. <laughs> no, but <Not> easy. Like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I pick, I pick, I pick. Pick, pick, pick. Hands, hands, hands. Blue, blue, yes, blue. Seeing as how you're the uh, one actor who's played against all the doctors who've been so far, most of them as the Brigadier, do you see playing the Brigadier again with uh, Colin Baker? Well, the question, oh, well, we've heard the question. Uh, first of all, I've played with all the doctors, not against them, I hope, otherwise I wouldn't still be the program. <laughs> as regards to, um, with Colin Baker, okay, sera, sera. It's nice enough for John Nathan Turner, I expect it will. Would you just like to shut up? Sorry. It's my turn. <laughs> just you pour your water. Okay, shut up. Are you, are you quiet now? <laughs> now, which we have? Oh. Hmm. What's the matter with me then? Don't I come in for a little water? Just hush. Uh, yes. No, it's the lady it's sitting down. <coughs> Hang on, wait for the mic. Then we can all hear. <sighs> what? Yes, I'd like to know why there's so much hostility be dif between the different... <laughs> 
So no way. Between the different incarnations of the doctors. I just don't like him. <laughs> oh well, there's lots of traits of one's own personality that one rather wouldn't have, or than not, and he's one of them. You do realise, of course, that we are one of the same person, so by saying that, he talks about hating himself. <laughs> Only part of myself. The nasty part. <laughs> the fancy part. <clears throat> Does that answer the question? <laughs> You can tell, as uh, three actors, they absolutely loathe each other. It's impossible working with them all together, I can tell you. <laughs> I'd like to say, what well, this particular point, although it's nothing to do with me, is that how Peter, the director, stood for all the rubbish and the laughter and the fun that we had in making The Five Doctors, I'm here to tell you there were scenes that were absolutely scarier, where we couldn't speak because we were all laughing so much. <laughs> Patrick was being objectionable as usual <laughs> <laughs> to me, not to anybody else. And it was wonderful. And oh. Peter's tolerance was quite wonderful. Do you not agree, chaps? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, give him a big hand. <laughs> it was a great back amazed and let it all happen. It was lovely. Then he slapped us down. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Peter. Uh, it's my turn. Yes, in the front. Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't actually hear the end of the question, but I assume it was this old. Uh... What? <laughs> As, as a, repeat the question, at, at the August convention, yeah. you said that uh, when you came back in November, you'd do your belly dance. <laughs> um, I'm advised by my lawyer, my right here, to claim the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> As I said yesterday, I've been on a diet since August. I don't have a belly anymore. Now you're wearing that trust. The doctor wouldn't approve either, would he? <laughs> yes. Gentleman there. <laughs> well, you don't have to have practical jokes. You know, the, the, the most idiotic things make you laugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you've only got to look at Patrick Trump. <laughs> no, you, it, you don't have to have specific funny things. I mean, uh, I've told this story once before, once with the brig. Uh, in what, which was it, brig? Inferno. Inferno. Inferno, and the brig was playing <coughs> two roles, and we were all... And down in, a, in another dimension, and we decided, because the brig was wearing a black eye patch, that we would put black eye patches on, Katie Manning, myself, and John Levine, <laughs> and went into his office, uh, and he was sitting with his back to us with his black eye patch on, and on cue, the brig swung his chair around and looked at three idiots with three black eye patches <laughs> on, uh, which the whole idea was to make the brig break up. Well, the result was the brig, being the solid rock he is, <laughs> did not break up and went straight on with the scene, and we became utterly hysterical and couldn't work <laughs> for three quarters of an hour. Peter, fine. Sorry. Girl in yellow. Why did I quit the show? Uh, well, it's a long story. <laughs> uh, no, I didn't really see it as quitting the show. It wasn't a sort of uh, on the spur of the moment decision. It's just when I took over the part, I decided to do it for three years. 
Um, I was advised to do this by this gentleman on my right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just felt it for more than three. <laughs> I just felt it was a, the right length of time for me to do it for, and to go back on that decision would have been a bit untrue to the way I felt about it at the beginning. And I enjoyed it, the three years immensely. I just feel now it's time to move on to other things. Yes, he's only a young lad, you know, that's a great future. Yeah. Young and restless, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, the, that was the reason, really. And also, you know, Colin Baker was a bit short of money, so, you know, I felt... <laughs> right, hands again. Uh, gentleman there. <coughs> How is K9 and Company faring in the world right now? Is it in a series? Is it a it's series? not, no. It, it was uh, made supposedly as a special, possibly to be followed by six episodes. Um, it had good viewing figures, good ratings, but the powers that be, I think John Nathan Turner will be able to tell you this, the head man changed, someone else came in and wanted to bring <coughs> something in of his initiation and um, I don't think it will happen now. It, is, it just stands as an hour special. It's about Chris. It happens at Christmas, so that's why um, it will go out probably just at that time of the year. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, wait, come on. Yes, yes, I, yes. Was, I was asleep. I was asleep. Oh, thanks, Greg. Thank you. Might as well, I was. Might as well. Of all the doctors that you worked with, which did you have the most trouble with? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. 